And when I go and play or, or to coach or show up to any of these things, I, I just want it to be good and competitive. I want good players on the floor. I want a decent effort from the officials. You know, I I don't you know to me a guy that officiates and is overbearing and makes the game about him. To me, he probably has a life away from the game. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, and there's one guy in particular that I I feel that strong. See, about. but you, basketball is something that I'm passionate. But see, about. that's why if you you're going to yeah. be out there and not give a damn. Stay home. No, and I feel that. We don't need you. I feel that. But and that's I'm because we love basketball, you. though. That's that's the main reason. It's because we love basketball. Because to other people, they show up and don't really give two f Like, right. it's, but, it's but because... If you, yeah. And if you want to say, how what what is the best uh, uh, environment for men's league basketball, it's the same environment for any basketball. You have people in the game that care about it, and they're there to, to do something. You have officials presiding over the game who care about that. You even have people at the scorer's table that care enough to stop a clock or have a score right. And if you don't care enough to do those basic things, get the f*** out of our game. Get the f*** out. Rec League is so tainted. Like, if you want to be 35 and older to play in these other leagues, because they just take care of it better. They just give you, like... It's just a better like you get better quality as far as like uh uh they stop the clock you know what I'm saying they make sure somebody get knocked down like I know that stuff don't mean nothing but the way guys complain in these rec leagues yeah, like yeah, bro yeah. like so you, 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 know, you think that 35 and over rec leagues are just a little bit better as far as quality wise yeah because I mean you got less guys also complaining too yeah, yeah like you yeah. know guys are just coming to play basketball they're not coming to you know, the one over in the pop is different. Like, that's the one where guys are still trying to go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Guys is, like, doing anything or whatever. But the 35 and up in Maitland. I don't know. I, I, I played in that league for a while at different points. And I didn't – I mean, there was plenty of old motherfuckers complaining about stuff. Oh, well, There shit, was I don't one know. guy, he played in that league. Uh, he got thrown out back-to-back -back weeks. <laughs> and he used to bring, like, his either his parents or grandparents used to come and watch. And they had to make the walk of shame with him after an ejection. Damn. Yeah, see. Yeah, see, I wasn't um, around and, for and, them guys. And, and, and again, I know we made the, the, the abrupt switch there, but this is uh, TP from THP, uh, Tony Howard Project. Yes, sir. And uh, so right now we're talking about, like, men's rec league basketball. So uh, if anybody, you know, don't know, like, a lot of – a lot of men who are not in the NBA or playing college basketball <laughs> and still has hoop dreams and still love to yeah. play. We enter these rec leagues, and, you know, they have, you know, regular season games, playoffs, championships. Same when, shit. When your man not at the house and he's saying he out playing basketball. It's, it's, it's he good. actually might be. He actually Same might be. Same shit. <laughs> right. For real. And, uh, yeah, so uh, before we get to your rec leagues that you run and, and, and tournaments, like when you're speaking about the rec leagues there, is that is – that, is that, What's the biggest problem with it? Because, like, you got a lot of guys that do complain about referees a lot. They complain about um, Dickhead Dan. <laughs> <laughs> and complain about just the overall, like like you said, quality of it. What's 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 some what's some complaints? And can it be fixed? Or like, what's the problem? So, I, I mean, I, I sit back and I watch it from both standpoints, a player, uh, a player standpoint, and I watch it from a standpoint of just, like, you know what I'm saying, uh, somebody just watching, you know what I mean, like a fan of the game. Uh, I think it's a combination of both. I think it's a combination of the referees and a combination of the players. But I think I think the biggest problem when I really, really look at the scope of it, you get a lot of guys that one kind of come in feeling like they were somebody or they should have been somebody or something. And those are the entitled guys that kind of start the problem with the complaints on the calls and, man, you know, the ticky-tack hand checks and stuff like that. Um, you got the guys that come from overseas and this I'm talking about this is a build up over the years. Like guys that come from overseas, they'll join the same rec league and kinda, you know, claim it as they own and hey, I'm back home, so the game gotta kinda flow my way. Um, so over the years you mix those guys with guys that just can't play basketball that's complaining, you know what I'm saying, constantly on the regular. The referee is just getting tired. You know, that's honestly when I when I talk to people um in the referee circuit that's all i hear it's 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 to a point now where a lot of referees don't even want to do men rec leagues no more because they kind of look at it like what's the point i can make more money you know with a kid listening to the parent complain 
And I that's you're gonna have to deal with that. But the parent only gonna go so far. Now some of these parents are jumping on out there, you know, I seen some shit this weekend. I was just like, whoa. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The big house. But uh, you know, but it's still you get less, you know what I'm saying, interaction with these players, you know, they they younger, they they in the gym, they you know, some of these referees are kinda old, you know, they're a little scary, a little skinny, and you know, you do got some that are assholes where I'm not gonna condone violence or nothing like that, but I mean it's some you got some that are definitely like come on bro like you just not even trying to be here like you just want yeah. some but i think again that's over time of just you already know what you're gonna get when the game starts guys are gonna complain no matter if it's a good game or a bad game somebody's gonna find a way to fuck up the vibe you know what i'm saying and it's just going it just continues from there so i don't know it's it's tough so mm. what say you I, I don't think it's very tough at all <laughs> I, I, no, I don't. I mean, if if you, you're either good official or you're bad official. A good official is consistently the same. A good official has a level demeanor. A good official will talk to people about calls, about things that are maybe not understood or situations in a respectful way. And then the game all goes better. It's like you you get treated how you treat other people. And so if you do, you know, if you communicate well, if you call the game as well as you can, um, people respect that and they do fine. Now, there's a couple of unhinged guys in the community that are going to get mad no matter what. And if you've been in this circuit, you know exactly who those guys are. And you can make a decision as a referee how I'm going to deal with that particular guy that, that is a loose cannon. I, you, yeah, you might want to throw him out pretty quick. And I'm not going to have an issue with that if a guy acts up. But I'm a big believer that you get back what you give. Mm -hmm. And if you have a defensive attitude, if you want to make a men's reg league game about you as an official, you're not doing the right thing. If you want to just get whatever that check is and you don't really care about what's going on, Mm -hmm. you don't belong out there. Now, we could say this is not the NBA, this isn't a professional setting, and all I get all that. But to the people that are going out and playing, they care. They just want a good officiated game, and, and they want to play. But, I, I mean, I'm not, I don't think the referees are what's wrong with men's league basketball. Okay. They're a factor, they're a consideration, and there's guys that I don't think should go be near basketball. Go do something else. The the, the players Officials. or the referees? Okay. Referees. Well, I'll get to the players in a moment. <laughs> but that that I strongly believe they don't they don't. You're not here for the right reason. Yeah. We're all. I mean, I love basketball. I love competing, whether I'm coaching it or playing it or whatever. And when I go and play or, or to coach or show up to any of these things, I I just want it to be good and competitive. I want good players on the floor. I want a decent effort from the officials. You know, I I don't you know to me a guy that officiates and is overbearing and makes the game about him. To me, he probably has a shitty life away from the game. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and there's one guy in particular that I I feel that strong. See, about. but you like you you like it as a hot you like it as a hobby as well. So it makes it more like worth the work. Like the when you're doing it, it's not work. It's something you love to do. Right. Some of these people just pick up part time jobs. Yeah, That's it. They just pick up a part time. Yeah, they just pick up a part time job. If and you're, you're, basketball is something that I'm passionate about. But see, that's why you. If you're going to yeah. be out there and not give a damn, stay home. No, and I feel that. We don't need you. I feel that. But and that's I'm because we love basketball, you. though. That's that's the main reason. It's because we love basketball. Because to other people, they show up and don't really give two fucks. Like, right, it's, but, it's because. But if you, yeah. And if you want to say, how what what is the best. Uh, uh, environment for men's league basketball it's the same environment for any basketball you have people in the game that care about it and they're there to, to do something you have officials presiding over the game who care about that you even have people at the scorers table that care enough to stop a clock or have a score right and if you don't care enough to do those basic things get the fuck out of our game get the fuck out no, I'm not an advocate for for the referees, but I will say I think if you're gonna say that, 
you got to also tell some of these players. Some of these players don't know the game of basketball. Well, so, uh, and let's go to that. And, and, yeah. Who's responsible for bringing these morons out there? Yeah, I was about to say, because <laughs> I think that's why these refs don't take on these people individually. They look at it like, hey, get your teammate. Because these are grown-ass men. Like, bro, you showed up to be here. Like, that's how these refs look at it. Like, you paid for this shit. Like, you want this. So I get what you're saying. Like, some of these, they, they come out the gate like they don't even want to work. But for the ones, there are ones where I see every now and again, like they start out like, look, I'm trying. And then here y'all go with the fuck shit. You know what I'm saying? You only got four guys. Y'all ain't got no jerseys and all kind. Y'all just, y'all, y'all bullshit it. And then y'all want us to be for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of the what I was getting at. Like, And, I, a, and I, I, I get what you're getting. And I also know that there's guys in town that are on the playing side that are just loose cannons. Yeah, yeah, exploding. facts. We know that. And whatever. That is what it is. But, I, I, again, it, like... Yeah, the, the directly best one. So I always think, like, one of the funny things is, like, and I think it happens at Goldenrod every year. <laughs> There's always going to be a couple teams that are good. Mm -hmm. and brought out quality guys and then there's always a couple teams that you've never seen these people before and you look at them and go god you have no idea what you just got into yeah, you, you aren't and some they're shit. just not equipped to compete at the level of the better teams in that league um but that you know that is what it is people are going to sign up and compete and, and my thing is if you're new to the scene you bring a team out there and you realize hey we're not at the level you know Whoever's running that team, you know, either decide, hey, we're not going to come back for another season and do this, and that's cool, or hey, there's a better level out there. We got to recruit some better players and and be in a situation that's competitive, um, and so that you now you become a team that that competes. Yeah, you know. Yeah, as so many of these leagues, the guys they want to play with their friends, and that's no problem with that. But I think you should look at the level of friends that you have. <laughs> And compare that and compare them to the, the, the competition in the league and then decide which league you guys should get into. Because once you, you know, get into a competitive league, you know, you have to know what your homeboys are capable of. And, and once you guys reel off four, you know, three or four or five 20-point losses in a row, like then those guys, they're going to stop showing up. They're going to they, – and that, that messes up. The, the the league for the other teams that annoys yeah, the sure. shit out of me. You know what I mean? So forfeited games. You have to know this ahead of time. It's not your first rodeo. It's uh, it's well, I, and I'm giving I'm giving the, the excuse like maybe for some of these people, they and again you got to realize some of these people probably play at you know LA a Fitness. single L L A Fitness location, and they see the world as that's. Yeah. Oh, we're good here. And they run the And yeah, they don't they know. The and they say, hey, let's sign up for this league. And then when you realize, there's no mistake in not knowing. <laughs> but once you know, now it's on you to, to adapt or, or get out. That's my thing. Like, you could have your friends and think you're a little bit better than you are, sign up in one of these leagues, and you get roasted. And now it's on you. Do you come back with a better roster? Or do you, you know, just say, hey, man, this ain't our thing. Let's just stay at the... At the Y. You know, you know what's crazy is I used to be that guy, right? Like, when That's I look right. at my journey, the guy who didn't know how to put the team together. Oh, okay. Like, so, like, we Some did. Some would say you still are. No, nah, you <laughs> shitting me. You got me fucked up. I would, hey, 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 let's put my team. I like my team. I like my guys. Um, But, no, so one thing I do try and do is keep the element of, like, a Miami Heat player. Like, just keep – raw guys you know maybe get one guy that's kind of got like a name here and there but you don't really oversaturate the team with oh you got him 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 yo i don't like that feeling i like guys that's just gonna who a guy that's kind of subpar here and there but he gonna do a lot of dirty work a little shit like that but i i do i will say you're right because that's kind of the reason like the gm5 was created was because back when we did the revere sports shit outside or whatever mm -hmm. i put teams together thinking okay i got this cat that can just fucking jump out the goddamn park you know what i'm saying i got this his homeboy who's like six four and then i got my homeboy who's like a really raw point guard and but he's kind of out of date he's not really on but i'm still thinking like and then somebody's offering me a guy i'm like yeah come on you you grab my team we showing up there man got mike pellet all these chicos out there kicking our ass running us up and down the court and i'm like oh Okay, so when I, cause I came from music side, so I didn't get a chance to like when I graduated, I didn't get a chance to kind of like follow basketball the way I I did in high school. I took a break. 
because I went straight into the music. But coming back into it and then starting to get deeper into like the tournaments and starting to see like the different players. No, you recognize you got to recognize and you got to say, OK, look, you got to build a good core. You know what I'm saying? Good, a good six, seven guys that can just go and you know you can rely on them and so on and so forth. Or she just never going to get a chance to really compete the way you feel like you want to compete. Unless, you know, you're cool with competing at some of these smaller levels. Because basketball is basketball to some people. So I won't ever take that part away.